have you ever had a song that came to you so easily, so naturally when it came to you, it was like almost complete. Like you could hear the whole thing. The lyrics came, the music. Have you ever had a song that just felt like a gift from uh source or from infinite intelligence or God or however you want to say it? Yeah, man. I, I call those sky songs, you know, sky songs, just like, like a download. It's, absolutely. It's like the spirits moving and you're just, you're just the, the, the conduit, you know, the, the pen is, is moving. And, and that only comes to me from writing all the time. You just got to write all of those shitty songs over and over again. And, and, and you just keep writing and, and writing and writing until those ideas come. And then it's just like, boom, it just pours out on the page. Um, and crazy about you was like that. I remember we wrote that at Jason's house. Um, the same, the same, we spent a week up at his house writing songs. We wrote, uh, um, the squeeze that week we wrote crazy about you that week uh and and that one just kind of blasted out it was based loosely on you know jason and his and his uh, relationship with his wife and uh we took that story and we just kind of started rolling it around and turning it into something great and and it, it came together really fast we have a, a fan question here from Brian Cannoneer. His question is, what's your favorite part of being in the Road Hammers or what is your fondest memory with your time with the band? Oh, wow. Um, oh, now my, my favorite part is seeing my friends, you know, my, who are my, my band family, you know, um, I, I love getting together with them and playing music and, 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 and being able to travel around the world is, is really incredible. Um, I think one of my fondest memories is is probably playing the Grand Old Opry uh, with the band, you know, which is kind of it's the Carnegie Hall of country music. You know, it's like the pinnacle of of what a, a country artist strives for. And we ended up playing two nights back to back. We played the first night uh, and you only get three songs and you walk no sound check, anything. It's live radio and it's you're you're in front of, you know. 3000 people in the auditorium and you walk, they introduce you, you walk out, you plug in and you play. And Jerry Reed had just passed away and we played Eastbound and down and dedicated it to him. And when we finished that last song, we had a standing ovation. The whole place erupted and stood. I got down on the stage and kissed the grand old Opry stage. And, uh, and we walked off and the, and the, uh, president of the Grand Ole Opry was standing there, shook our hands. He said, you guys, we really would love it if you'd come back tomorrow night and, and do it all over again. So we were, we were flabbergasted. So yeah, the next night we were, we were in little Jimmy Dickens dressing room, hanging out and, and uh, did it all over again and played, played our music. And I think that's definitely a, a, a highlight career highlight for me. Yeah. Not, not only that you made it to being able to play there, but that you guys knocked it out out of the park like you were ready for that moment which is awesome yeah you know i, I i'm a big believer in that you know there's no such thing as luck it, it's just luck is preparation meeting opportunity and and up until that point we had we had prepped for that moment playing hundreds of shows you know thousands of hours and then that opportunity came and we we kicked the door wide open I have some kind words from a good friend of mine. So this is from country singer David Boyd Janes. Him and I, long <laughs> before his music career, were watching UFC, playing poker together. Uh, this is a good friend. Uh, I, I I was actually just talking to him because his song was playing in the ra on the radio here uh, in Ottawa. So I FaceTimed him so he could see it. And um, I just mentioned, you know, the artists that I, I was having on the podcast and he said, hey, I know. Yeah, I know Clayton. So here here's his quote. He says, Clayton Bellamy is hands down one of the best front men I've ever seen live between Clayton and my other buddy, Jason McCoy. They have really paved the way for killer live shows in Canadian country and Canadian rock music. I've most definitely taken a ton of notes from their live shows and I've implemented them in my own live show. So it's what is it? Uh, it what is it like not thievery is the form of flattery something like that you know, right right yeah, yeah. from the best so that's david who's you know at, at the forefront now of country and he's uh paying his respects to you guys oh well, that's that's very kind of him we've written some cool songs together and he and i and, and he's a great artist uh you know i i've always 
like we were talking about earlier about seeing with your eyes, you know, when you, and, and I believe that. And, and, and I, I grew up in an era of the front man, you know, like, um, uh, now I'm, you know, some of the greatest front men from the eighties and, and, you know, growing up and seeing those bands like David Lee Roth and, and, you know, the jump like kick when, when, and the, the jump exactly, splits. That, and... it, fantastic, that, you know, jumping off the drum riser and, 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 and really more than anything, engaging the audience. That's, that's been something that I feel like, you know, it's not as much as it is about your music and your art. When, when it comes to the live show, to me, it's about bringing the people into the experience that you're having together and making it all, you're all having this moment together. And if you can do that and, and capture that, it, it, it just makes an incredible moment. People will walk away going, that was the best show I've ever seen because they feel like they played a part in it. They had a role in this moment that you're sharing. And, and that's, what's magical about music, man. It, it's, it, it, it really, and it's time stamped. You can hear that song after that and it'll immediately take you back to that moment in time every time. So we've, we've made it all the way to the final release from the road hammers, uh, leaving 30 minutes or so to dive into the congregation, which I'm excited for. Uh, so in 2021, just last year, you guys released a six song EP, uh, called back at it, three singles, the boys are back at it, giver and hillbilly disco, uh, I dove into the music videos. I, I I love those singles, man. You guys came out hard uh, with 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 that album. Um, my my question is actually we have a fan question here from Jessica Ryder. Uh, is there a Roadhammer song that you really connect to personally of the entire discography? Is there one that you put on and it just speaks to you? I mean, they're all your babies. It's hard to pick, but it's a fan question. Yeah. Um... There's a, there's a lot. Uh, I, I think that, that, I mean, cause you know, when you're writing the songs, it, they, they definitely speak to you personally. Sometimes it's, it's the ones that we ended up covering that we didn't write that I found like hit me more. Uh, the one that we covered off of, uh, the squeeze record, all your favorite bands. You know, we play that song, uh, and our, on our encore every night. And, and it, it really always seems to still hit me that, you know, that whole idea of the, the hopes and dreams that everybody has for, for their lives and for their loved ones, you know, um, and that sentiment really carries with me. And uh, I, I love singing that every night and just, uh, you know, I hope that all your favorite bands stay together. I mean, that's a great, a great, but for me too, I hope my favorite band, which is this one stays together. <laughs> After after kind of the, the darkness of 2020, the start of the pandemic, not knowing if there's ever going to be live shows again. This is before the vaccines and everything. Uh, did it, was it like cathartic releasing an album in 2021, releasing something positive, getting something out there? Uh, does, is there kind of a special feeling for that EP for some reason? Uh, I, I think so. I, I think, uh, you know, not only was it good to get out music, but we did a lot of cleansing too with, you know, and, uh, you know, moving on from our old label and our old management and getting away from some things that were maybe, you know, had become a toxic environment for us. And, uh, you know, we needed to get to a point, uh, you know, of renewal, you know, and I think that that last album was kind of the, the final hurrah with that team and that crew and, um, um, and that, and it, it's kind of left now, uh, we're we've kind of shed some old skin so we're in a position now where everything is new you know we're back you know playing live music again that's new it feels new we feel renewed and feel fresh and we're also back to you know making we're making music for the first time that has no boundaries and uh you know we're 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 free agents which is really an exciting place to be right now and and uh you know the world is kind of our oyster so we're I'm, I'm really excited to, it feels like, it feels very much like where we were in 2004 when the, when the band first got together, where there's no expectations, there's no, you know, preconceived notions of anything. We can be or we can do anything at this point in time. And I think we're going to make some of our best work coming up. So final question as we transition over to the congregation, 
if if we fast forward hundreds of years into the future where most of today's music has has kind of faded from memory but there's one road hammer song that is still around and you can choose that song to represent the band for the future half human half cyborg versions of ourselves <laughs> what you know may You'd probably think of, oh, you know, the most popular Road Hammer song is one that would survive. But this is if you could put in a capsule one song that you would want to best represent the band for future generations to hear. So it's a little a little trickier than the normal question. Man, I think it's the song, the title track off of our 2015 album, Wheels. Something about wheels, something about a highway. Something about a big old stretch and nothing round, just putting that hammer down. That's the that's it, man. That that's wheels is is a perfect representation of what this band was all about and how it was conceived. You know, we wanted it to be a uh you know, based on those amazing 70s trucker albums. Uh, and uh and that's what we did. We made a we made a whole band just about singing about wheels. That's amazing. I think that's the right answer right there. I think you I think you nailed it. So I have uh, one comment and then we dive into the congregation. So uh, on Tuesday, I was playing hockey. Uh, I, I'm in the parking lot and there's another player uh, who's an amazing singer songwriter. He asked Joel, what are you up to? And I mentioned the podcast. I just had stained on. That's one of my favorite all time bands. Just had big wreck on. And I, I mentioned that I, I have Clayton Bellamy coming up and he goes, Oh, I know Clayton. So this is from Chris LaBelle, who is the singer for the Rivertown saints. And yeah. he's, he's so good at hockey that the players that we play with when he comes out. So he gets a call when we were short on players and there's actually a rule that he's not allowed to score because he would just score whenever he wants. So this guy will get a breakaway and he has to wait for someone to catch up to make the pass to the other guy. So anyways, that's that's me pumping him up a little bit as a hockey player. So this is what Chris has to say. Uh, and I go way back to Canadian Idol days with him. That's how I know him. So uh, Chris says. Best thing about Clayton is he's not only an incredible musician in all genres, but he's a better human being when you meet the guy. He always takes the time out of his day and looks you directly in the eye when you're talking to him. A hundred percent total gentleman, Chris LaBelle. Uh, that that makes me feel really great. Chris is a great human. And, and you know, that that's the most important thing that we're, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that we're here on this earth. You know, if we can leave it a little better than we than we found it. That's the whole point, man. And uh, and I, I really, there's a few moments every night in our show that we really do our best to try and connect and to leave that sentiment every night. And I feel like that, you know, as as we've gone on down the trail, you know, you you get a little older and you uh, you realize that yeah, that's that's kind of what we're here to do. It's not to to make records or to make money or to you know, it, it's really to 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 try and leave a mark with people and, 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 and leave them, leave, leave the place a little better than we found it, you know? So that, that, that makes me feel great to hear. And uh, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of his band and, and I never knew he was that kind of a hockey player. I wish I played hockey like that. I can't even skate. 